Hey guys, thank you for checking out this video. My name is George. In this video, we will learn how to use a rotary encoder with ESP32 using MicroPython programming language. Rotary encoder is a device that converts angular position into two output signal that is 90 degrees out of phase, with its other as one pin comes in contact before the other pin. What I have here is a rotary encoder module from Gorilla Cell ESP32 development kit. This rotary encoder has 20 steps for one revolution. It also features a push button switch, which is great for user input applications. It has five pins, namely GND for the ground pin, VCC for the supply voltage, SA. For the signal pin A, SB for the signal pin B, and SW for the signal pin from the push button switch. For this experiment, you will need an ESP32 development board to serve as the brain for the experiment, an ESP32 shield from Gorilla Cell ESP32 development kit to extend ESP32 pins to pin headers for easy circuit connection. A 5 pin, female to female, DuPont jumper wires, and of course, the rotary encoder module itself. I already have it set up in advance where the ESP32 is attached on top of the ESP32 shield. I attach the DuPont jumper wires to the rotary encoder module by following the color coding, which is black for the ground, red for the VCC, yellow for the signal pin A white for the signal pin B, and blue from the push button switch, while the other end of the DuPont jumper wires is attached to the ESP32 shield by matching the colors of the wires to the colors of the pin headers, which is black to black, red to red, yellow and the following colors to the yellow pin headers. For this experiment, I choose GPIO32, GPIO33, and GPIO34 to serve as input pins from the rotary encoder module. Now for the software part, I prepared here to example source code for this demonstration. Now for example number one, let me click the run button and let me demonstrate how it works. The push button switch is used to enable or disable the readings of the rotary encoder module. Let me press it. Now it says, Rotary encoder is now enabled. When I rotate the knob of the encoder in clockwise direction, it will return a positive values beginning from 1 to 19. And it will return back to 0. While rotating it in counterclockwise direction will give a decreasing value. As you can see, 19, 18, and it will return back to 0. Just like that. Now, if I press the knob again, it says rotary encoder is now disabled. So that when you rotate the rotary encoder, nothing will happen. Until such time that the button is pressed again. It begins by importing the pin class from the machine module to access the ESP32 pins. Then the sleepms class is imported from the time module to create some delays in milliseconds resolution. Then the rotary library is also imported to help us easily use the rotary encoder module. By the way, this library is not built in in MicroPython firmware. This is available from the GitHub of Mike Teachman. So what you will do is copy the rotary.py and rotary IRQ ESP, which I renamed to rotary underscore IRQ, and save it to your MicroPython's root directory. Then we created the rotary encoder object named R. The first two parameters are the pin assignments for the two pins of the rotary encoder, which is the pin SA 
and the pin SB, which is connected to GPIO32 and GPIO33. Mean val and max val sets how many steps for one revolution does the rotary encoder module have. This rotary encoder has 20 steps for one whole revolution. So we write here 0 to 19. Then reverse to true because I want when I rotate it in clockwise direction, it will give positive while rotating it in counterclockwise direction will give negative. You can change this to false if you want the other way around. Now to read the push button switch, we created a pin object named SW, which is connected to GPIO 34 with the pin direction as input. Now to constantly check for the rotary encoder signals, we use an infinite loop using this line of code, which will serve as the main loop. This if statement checks if the knob push button is pressed. When the value read from the switch is logic 1, it means that the switch is being pressed. Then, the is rotary encoder variable plug is toggled. And according to the state of the is rotary encoder variable plug, a serial print is sent to the REPL. The second if statement is for displaying the rotary encoder values. When the is rotary encoder variable is set to true, then it will read the rotary encoder value and save it to the val new variable. Now to prevent unnecessary processing the rotary encoder when it is not been rotated, the new value is compared to the old value. If it is not the same, then it means that the rotary encoder has been turned. Then the current value is saved to the old value for the next loop comparison. Then the current rotary encoder value is printed to the REPL. And the program will loop again after 200 milliseconds. Now for example number 2, let us see a simple application of the rotary encoder module. We will use this 0.96 OLED display. Let me connect this to the ESP32 shield. I already attached the 0.96 OLED display to the GPIO21 for the SDA pin and GPIO22 for the SCL pin. Let me click the stop button to terminate the example number 1. And let me click the run button to execute example number 2. As you can see, it displays a simple menu system here in the OLED display. So we can navigate in the menu by rotating it clockwise direction. As you can see, it goes down. And it can move up to the previous menu by rotating it in counterclockwise direction. Now let's test some application here. So it says blink LED. I will press the knob. And it display blinking LED. And as you can see, the onboard LED is now blinking. To turn it off, just press the knob again. One more. Or we can activate the LED, so it will just turn on the LED and it will not blink. I will press the knob and it says LED activated. To turn it off, press the knob again. Or invert the OLED, which will invert the OLED display. Now to revert back to the previous state of the OLED, just press the knob again. Or we can use the onboard real-time clock of the ESP32. We can display a time, a date, and a weekday or the day of the week. So let's say display date. But I do not modify the date here. But it's okay. It says here 
The date now is April 11, but it's actually April 12. Don't worry, it's just for the demonstration. So let's display the date. The date now is 2021 April 11. Or, revert back, we can display the time. So the time here is 10.12 in the morning. So I will display the time and it says 10.15 or we can display the day of the week which is Sunday. I will not go to explaining the whole code because it's a little bit long as you can see. What I will do is explain it in detail in the companion blog post for this video techtotinker.blogspot.com Links in the video description. So that's pretty much of it. I hope you learned something from this. If you have any question, please write your message in the comment box provided. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and share so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell because I will be uploading more videos like this in the future. Thank you and see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.